There are nearly 115,000 solicitors in Britain. That means there are more solicitors in this country than doctors. Got an image in your mind when you think of solicitors? Pinstripe suits? Long lunches? Flash cars? Well, this is Withenshaw, South Manchester, and down here, they do things a little differently. Hello. Hi. Monday morning, 8am, and the calls are coming Go in at the home of me. legal coordinator Jackie Rowland. She handles police and courts business for Tranter's solicitors in Withenshaw. Okay, it's her job to assign clients who've been arrested over the weekend right, to the relevant great. solicitor. So and it's clearly been a busy weekend for Tranter's client base. Right, that's brilliant. OK. OK, lovely. All right, thank you. Speak to you later. Every morning, um, all the overnight work that comes in, I have to collect. So with it being weekend, um, obviously it's coming in from Saturday morning because it's a Saturday call, but anything after Saturday morning, it's all in this morning. So um, Ava, she's just telephoned to make sure I know about one that she had at 2 o'clock last night. Tim's just phoned to confirm that it's looking like 10 o'clock, so I know I've got that one on the bubble. So uh, I'll be waiting to fix somebody in with that one. Um, I already know, I've just had a phone call just before you came, um, that somebody's off sick, so I'm already an advocate down, and I know I've got an extra court in because on Saturday, client wouldn't have um, the duty and has been parafived until this morning, so I know I've got an extra court and I'm one solicitor short. Hello. Bye. Hi, it's Jackie. Hokey cokey. All those who were on call have phoned in to voicemail, so they left all the messages, everything that's been on last night, all, all over the weekend, um, and let me know so that I can pick it up first thing and then I can redirect people, because obviously I'll have allocated it on Friday. But Friday, I won't know what's happening Monday. It's like blind Monday, because you've no idea what's happening in two days. So... Isn't it a bit odd actually doing it from your, your own front room, Mike? Um, I'm used to it now. I've been doing it for a number of years, so... Hi, <laughs> Puss. The cases keep coming in as Jackie makes her way into work. I know, I know. The problem is I've got David elsewhere with uh, a lady that uh, also needs him. It's a bit delicate, so... Um... Well, I don't think you don't normally... Um, I don't like giving any shit very frankly, but it should be all right. OK, that's fine. Just see what happens. Play it by ear and we'll, uh, we'll go accordingly, OK? All right. All right, see you later. Bye. The cases that are coming into Jackie may well end up here, Manchester Magistrates Court. One of the firm's clients, Seamus Dillon, is up on a public order charge after a run-in with the police. Yeah, I'm here today because of um, an incident that occurred in, uh, three months ago, and it was about just uh, a walking me dog, basically, it was about. And uh, it was a case of, like, I, we were walking a dog and uh, my brother's house was on the way past, and. What had happened was we checked in because the door was open late at night and we took it to be strange at that time of the night. <laughs> so what had happened was we then like approached the house, like went in and checked, and then when we left, as we were leaving, we'd only found out that like the police were called because they, she thought she was being burgled. So like we went off, and then as we were going up the road, we were then set upon by the police because we'd seen the police arrive, but then we carried on feeling nothing for it because we've left it in safe hands and she said, okay. Then all of a sudden the police just come and set upon us. They approached my cousin at first and then they two got me and I was there, I was held. I was so I was in a shock when it came. I had to let go of my dog and that's one thing I really shouldn't have done, but I had to because they both were at me. 
And at the end of the day, as I believe it was wrong, they'd approach a manor. Principal trial specialist Avisha Galati is representing him. Um, all being well, a trial will take place. Court's been allocated for the trial. Three police officers are expected to come and give evidence against the client. They'll be cross-examined by myself. Um, the client and his witness and the co-accused will give evidence. Um, I, d I don't know what the situation is with the co-accused, whether or not he's pleaded guilty or not guilty at the moment. Um, and then the magistrates will reach a decision one way or another. I'm feeling very nervous. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I find it hard to talk in here because especially going up against the police, obviously, this case shouldn't have been happening. I shouldn't even be talking with him. I shouldn't even be here. I'm sorry to say, you know what I mean? It's justice for you. And if I say about the judge, if she shouldn't be on that. And if I'm convicted, she should be thrown away as well. Thanks anyway, yeah. Cheers. All the best to you. Firms offices, Jackie Rowland is organising more casework. That's fine. Okay, that's great. Okay, all right, speak to you later. Bye. This board's all about the police stations which are coming in during the course of the day, so of course then we can uh, track them, track the files and make sure everything's in. Um, so we get rid of that first thing in the morning and then um, just start putting all the new stuff up, which is what uh, Jed will do. As you've seen, I've allocated everybody this morning, so they'll all be scurrying around now, getting to the right cause. I've just got to sort this agency uh, matter out. And I do this one. Oh, sod off. <laughs> and Chief Issue Clerk Ronald Wilkinson is ready to move around the vast amount of paperwork a typical solicitor's practice generates. His nickname in the firm is Rocket Ronnie. Can you tell us what it is you're up to at the minute? I do. Can you tell us what it is you're up to? Well, I'm just going down to our family office now and then I'll be going over to court. What have you got with you? Um, well, just some files. Court this morning, that's all. Oh, quiet day, quiet day today. Okay. If I get on a meter, I will do. But the chances of doing that are very, very slim. Are you normally on double yellow lines then? Well, I try not to be, obviously. <laughs> I don't like to break the law. But there are times when you've got to, I'm afraid. I suppose uh, you, you must be a firm favourite with the traffic wardens, then. Eh? Well, I used to get to know them all. They used to know me. And they knew I'd only be there a minute. So they used to wave me on. Them. But now they've got these chaps in the, the new ones, in the red, they won't, uh, they won't speak to you on a, on, a, on a friendly basis. They won't get to know you. Less than a minute. Then again, if they come around the corner and catch me, then they'll do me. So not only are you working to try and get all the papers in on time, but you're also trying to beat the traffic wards? I'm trying to beat the traffic wards as well. And the traffic, I mean, this is quiet. Normally I'm stuck in traffic for 10, 15 minutes in the mornings, trying to get down to town. And the phone's going, where are you? You must think about a helicopter. I can just fly over the traffic, you know what I mean? Manchester Magistrates Court, Seamus' case has finally been heard and things haven't gone his way. Right, well, the outcome is uh, I've come back on Tuesday for a, a sentence, to be sentenced for communal work by the looks of things, but I believe it's wrong in its statement as it is. So uh, hopefully by Tuesday I'll have the right sense to appeal against it and go to the Crown Court, hopefully, which will be a better judgment and view into it. I didn't think I'd even see half the day in here, let alone all the day. I didn't even think it should have come here anyway. It shouldn't have been here. It's, it has been a long day. It has day. been a long day. Even the snow's fallen. <laughs> you know, the Arctic's already here. <laughs> no, it has been a long day and it's, it's been tired so many it's wrong. And I was shocked when he heard the report what he said. So, as I said, he shouldn't be sat in that chair. So that's down me. Can you describe Seamus as a person? He's a very good person, he, no, no trouble out of him at all. He's never been in trouble, they've just said that, that he's never had any faults about him. 
he was walking down the road with his dog at the middle, 12 o'clock at night, and he got bombarded by police. For, for what? It could be anybody, anybody. Just watch your back when it comes to the police, that's all I really can say about them. You don't know, you don't know anymore, and it's happening too much these days. It's happening too much, them just walking away from it. And what, from now, I mean, do you, ha do you have to come back on Tuesday? Or... Yes, I do. Uh, oh, no, I, I don't have to come back on Tuesday, but when we go to the Crown, I'm going all the way through again, yes. I'm going to make sure I'm by his side because he did not do nothing wrong and for the treatment that he's getting for something that he didn't do, it, it's unnatural, it's wrong. Several days later, Seamus is back in court to find out his sentence. He's been sentenced by way of a 12-month conditional discharge and ordered to pay £70 court costs. OK, so how does that go about for me? A conditional discharge means that provided he remains out of trouble for the next 12 months, we'll hear nothing further in respect to this matter. Should, however, he be convicted for another offence within that period of time, he would risk being resentenced for this matter. So is that pretty much the conclusion you're expecting to hear today? It was the conclusion we would hope for. It's a reasonable sentence, yes. Manchester Magistrates Court, there's another case for Withenshaw based solicitors' trancers to deal with. Security guard Elton Cook faces serious charges after a row outside his house with a neighbour. He's been charged with a Section 47 assault. We're here at Manchester City Magistrates Court um, to represent Mr um, Elton Cook in connection with um, an application to vary his bail condition. Um, at the moment he's on bail um, not to go to his um, street where his home address is um, because he's facing an allegation of assault against his next door neighbour who lives right next door to him. And we wanted to make an application to enable him to go back to his home address to retrieve property and belongings and make his accommodation safe whilst he's not living there. Well, the application has been granted. He's enabled to go back to the property tomorrow, and um, it's been suggested that we approach the police and ask for a police escort to enable him to attend there safely and without any um, further difficulties in connection with his bail or any further difficulties in connection with the matter that's proceeding. It's rather nerve-wracking uh, to actually go in court, you know, and face the magistrates. But at the end of the day, uh, I'm here with my lawyer to obviously face any allegations that are put against me. It's quite a shock to be honest with you. I mean, the family is, and myself is under a lot of pressure at the moment with what's going on, and we've just got to try and deal with it as best as we can. As Elton Cook wakes to hear if the police will escort him to his house in Withenshaw, one of Gail's colleagues is visiting another claim. He's involved in a personal injury claim after being hit by a drink Morning. driver. Morning. Can you tell us what it is we're doing here today? Sure, just come to see a client of mine, Kirk Jones. This is not the first time that I've seen him. Um, we're coming back to see him again. He's one of my clients who suffered quite, quite severe injuries. Um, so we're coming to see him now to see how he's progressing and also to meet with a rehabilitation expert um, who's coming along also to visit him and see what we can do for him. What were uh, his injuries? He suffered, his worst injury was um, well, fractures to his left leg um, and he required an operation to have all metal work and metal rod put in, which he's still got in at the moment. And it's a question now of whether he's going to have that, that metal work taken back out, when it's going to be taken out and really how he's going to recover um, if indeed he does fully fr from this accident. Hi. Good morning, how are you doing? All right, thanks. Nice to see you again. How's that shoulder? It's all right, my shoulder's fine now. Is it? Yeah. You left just a message legs. the other day about um, you'd been to see the consultant. At the physio? Yeah. Oh, at the you're hospital? Not yeah, I'm having it out in the next three months. Right. Within the next three, three months. And is that the whole nail and the screws? Yeah. If, there's a, if there's a cancellation, I can get in a bit earlier. Excellent. It's amazing the difference you'll feel once it comes out. Are you still struggling to kneel down? I can't kneel down because the that. nerves are damaged. Yeah. It feels numb on my knee. What's he said about that? 
Uh, not much. I told them at the physio yesterday. Right. I told her. And what, what was their reaction to that? It's just said it's nerve damage. They'll, they'll join back together, and the ones mm -hmm. that don't, then... It's just time, really, Kirk. It's... Uh, you'll probably always feel something there. You, yeah. You'll always remember that you once had a broken leg. Yeah. I can't go out and do stuff. Mm. Not not lifting wise. So your social life's still sort of at a all time low. Yeah. You still seeing your girlfriend? Yeah. Yeah, how are things there? It's all right, but we just we just have arguments every now and again. Mm. Just builds up from nothing. So this is why we sort of want to look at this counselling and find yeah. that way sort of trying to withdraw. Do you want to talk about that? Now and again, it'll just I'll just be feel angry and... Mm. How does that, what, what do you do, how does that express itself? I don't know, I just... It just seem, seems to come from nowhere, just start getting angry, I don't know. No particular thing, but just... Sometimes crazy. depressed. Right. But then other days I'll be, I'll be all right, I'll just feel normal. I mean, we, we knew it was going to be a while before we could settle this case, so it's not just about the compensation, but it's if we're in a position to help him out with physiotherapy, counselling, see what we can do to get him back to work, um, that's what we're looking at in the meantime to, to, to really see what we can do for him. You've obviously uh, seen Kirk through for, for several months now, you've seen him from day one. Yes. Um, how does it feel to see his progress? Um, it, it's refreshing. I mean, the, the last time I saw him, he was long crutches and feeling quite down. I mean, we discussed about that inside. And really, it's, I mean, in my mind, it's, it's just the way which, the position he finds himself in, he felt very down about the fact that he couldn't get out and things. So it's, it, it's, it's nice and refreshing to see him um, in a lot better position. It's been hard for, for my family, for my girlfriend, but, uh, Things that well, I just seem to be getting better, but I've just been in pain with my leg. My uh, my shoulder was painful as well, and uh, just seems to be getting better now. Though it's got two pins at the bottom, two at the top here, and uh, a rug going through the the bone, the tibia, and the bricks in the middle, around about the middle. And how painful is it at the moment? It's just painful due to the muscle not being able to support it. And uh, it's just, I think, uh, the, the bone's taking the weight. If Kirk gets compensation, it's likely that the cheque will be handed over by Chief Issues Clerk Rocky Ronnie. Today he's set to deliver a payout to a woman involved in a car accident. Um, can you take this cheque to client? Right, OK. That's the office um, That's definitely details. Going. Right. That's their free gift for her. Right? OK. And she just needs to complete, there's a form on the back to say that she's had the cheque. Right, sign and it. And also a form she needs to fill in, just basically asking her um, what she thought of the well, service. service. Yeah. Lovely, fine, That's no problem. It. No problem. I don't need that, do I? You don't need that, no. Just take that from you. Okay, yeah. okay, lovely. thanks a lot, man. Thank you. We're going to uh, a client's address in uh, Old Trafford. Well, it's not, not their address, actually, it's a place of work. Uh, to uh, deliver a nice little cheque for her. These are the uh, sort of jobs I like, where being a bit of happiness. Not, uh, not bad news, good news. Sorry? Do you know where about this? Where are you going? I have no idea, actually. I'd have to search around and see how we get out of this car park. Ah! Debbie, <laughs> don't mind. I'm going to go with you so we can try to put something here for you. OK. Do you want to come through with yes, me? Yes, I've got to get going at half past three, you know. Right, OK, no problem, no problem. It's going to take a few minutes, just a couple of minutes. OK. Right, OK. Do you have a seat, Daddy? Yeah. That's it. There we are. That's a cool thing, Daddy. You need to do it for me? Basically, we're just stuck in traffic um, in sale, going on my way to work. It was the first thing in the morning, about 8 o'clock. As we were stopping, start, I just drove up the back of me. Just didn't stop. That's lovely. Okay. Thank you very much. Excellent. Everything all right with you? Yes, it's yes. fine. It's been good. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to pay my car off. Yeah, do something good with it so I can have some extra money. So, yeah, it's good. 
How does it feel handing the check over to you like that, knowing that it's... I'm sorry? How does it feel handing the check over? Oh, yeah, nice, nice, nice feeling. Nice feeling, yeah. Yeah, rather than giving bad news, give good news. Lovely, lovely. So, so sort the of jobs I like. Elton Cook's request for a police escort has been granted. He's got about half an hour to grab his belongings. Under the terms of his bail, he's not allowed to set foot on his street without the court's permission. Yep, so I'm going to pack up. Because I'm being pushed out of my own home, basically. There you go. All one's worldly goods in one box. Away, yeah. um, it's the Natworks Piggies, believe it or not. And then I'm getting my tools, uh, the DIY, power tools, that kind of thing. Sentimental ornaments, that kind of thing. These are the wives. It's not an easy process, as you can possibly tell. The police officer, unhappy about the amount of time Elton's taken to collect his belongings, asks us to leave. Uh, basically, I'm back at my house today because the bail conditions stipulate that I'm not allowed to attend my home address. Uh, and the bail conditions, we went back to court yesterday, um, basically on the 23rd, to get bail variations. Uh, the bail variations were basically for me to attend the home address to basically collect the belongings which are in my vehicle at the moment. Um, with a police officer in presence because I'm in fear of my life through the threats from this party which I've assaulted um, and at the end of the day uh, the police officer was being very very insensitive in his nature basically saying that I had to hurry up in what, what I had to do and you can as anyone can appreciate I've got a, you know, a house full of belongings and since I've been arrested on the 11th of February um, there's been various damage done to the property uh, such as the window being smashed, garden furniture being stolen, the shed attempting to be broken into, um, felting off the shed, shed roof being damaged, and just various petty, you know, criminal damage, which has obviously got to be linked, I'm sure, to the court case that's going ahead. I mean, it's going to come strongly in my favour, I hope, when it does go to court, but it's very upsetting the way this police officer has treated me today. Next time on Withenshaw Law, life gets stressful for Elton Cook, banned from his house by the courts, and Kirk Jones undergoes a major operation on his leg. If you'd like more information about the issues raised in this programme, go to our website, granadatv.com, where you can get our fact sheet. The great thing about this new show is there's no age limit. The goal won't bring you happiness. And because of Tameside General Hospital in Greater Manchester and drink drive victim Kirk Jones is waiting to be taken into theatre for surgery. Two years ago he was knocked down crossing a road. His ongoing personal injury claim is being dealt with by Withenshaw Bay solicitors Tranters. I can't go out and do stuff, no. not, not lifting wise. So your social life still sort of at an all time low? Yeah. You still seeing your girlfriend? Yeah. Yeah, how are things there? It's all right, but we just we just have arguments every now and again. Mm. Just builds up from nothing. So this is why we sort of want to look at this counselling and yeah. find that way of sort of trying to withdraw. Today is a key part of Kirk's recovery process. He's having a 10-inch metal rod removed from his leg. Do you want me to show you? He said he's going to be uh, taking the pins out of the top and bottom there. Out of there and there, put in there and then removing the metal work. And then 
don't know. I'll just probably grab that like down there. And... What's the one thing you have, you're most hoping to do that you've missed doing for the last two years? You just haven't been able to do it that you're looking for doing the most. It's not actually the thing I'm looking for doing the most. Work. It sounds it sounds odd, but it is. I've not been in work, have I? And I want to get get back to work. Just get out of the house, really. Just get back into normal routine. It's, it's a bit odd, quite intrusive. Yeah. Have you had anyone come around and talk to you? Then they basically explain what they're going to do. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Rabi's been around. He explained a few things, and then somebody came about the. Uh, and is it the anaesthetic? They're explaining yeah. about that. Yeah. Full. That's all I said. Full anaesthetic. At Manchester Magistrates Court, another of the firm's clients is making an appearance. Elton Cook has been charged with assault after an incident involving a neighbour outside his house in Withenshaw. Today is his second time in court since being arrested. So how are you feeling today, Alison? Uh, pretty stressed out, again, with the, the whole situation again. You know, it's just the, the anxiety of waiting to get in the court and basically, you know, dot the I's, cross the T's and uh, enter my plea today, because that's what I'm here for today. To, but I'm not guilty of playing because of the mitigating circumstances leading up to the uh, alleged assault. He's charged with an assault occasion actual bodily harm. Uh, there are certain points that they will look at as being aggravating features. Uh, it's an either way charge that can be dealt with either here or at the Crown Court. If they feel that it's too serious and their sentencing powers here wouldn't be sufficient, then that will normally be the reason that they would decline to deal with the matter here. And because of certain aggravating features in it, they will probably say that it needs to go to the Crown Court wish to go to Crown Court to be able to put it across to a jury, you know, for them to hear the evidence that's against me, you know, to basically put my side across, you know, because I don't feel a magistrate could probably deal with the case. Do you think the uh, sort of gravity of the situation gets quite strong at the, at the minute, I mean, especially because you're going to be going over there? Mm, I think it does, yeah, because I think at the end of the day, I mean, going to Crown Court, you realise how serious the events are. And it does seem rather strange that it's getting, you know, what was possibly a minor incident, in my opinion, is getting, you know, is taking so long. And what, so what are you expecting to hear in there today? Um, basically, I'm hoping to get elected to Crown Court um, so a jury can hear my case. Tameside General personal injury client Kirk Jones is ready for his anaesthetic before his leg operation gets underway. Be warned, what you're about to see is a grueling procedure. Hi. Hi. All right. It's been a bit of a long wait, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Right, He's sir. going to put a drip up in your left hand. Go on, Adam. So you got the sticking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not that bad. Not bad. Wonderful. Just going to give you a painkiller now. Okay. It's going to make you feel more drowsy and drunk. Just relax. This might sting a little bit in your arm. Just. You feel a bit going a bit drowsy. Yeah. Good. Okay. All right. All right, there. Just trying to keep your eyes open for me. Okay. Here we go. Just a bit more. Yeah. So, with that, we're going to, you know, ventilate his lungs. That's how we're going to give him all the gases, which is going to keep him asleep during the operation. Bit of scissors, please. Side knife. Inside.
Okay. Watch. Hello, please. Here we are, that's the device, and we're done. Right, okay, you can see that. That is the camera plan is and it's a spot on your base. Now now Can you say it? No. No. Yeah. Client Elton Cook has been barred from his house and his street by the courts until his assault case is heard. As a result, he and his wife have had to move in with his mum. Not an ideal situation. Well, it's not in there, definitely. It's not that. What's that? That's, um... Is that a skirt? Yeah, that's just... No, that's We've that's not that's had anybody skirt. to turn to, only by Elton being arrested through the situation. Uh, we've been on our own. We've had to go alone. There's only myself and my brother been able to help the couple. I often wonder where they would have gone on that night because once my son was arrested, he was not allowed to return to the matrimonial home, the area, and nothing. What are you looking for? Looking for them uh, stuff, toiletries and stuff in here. I've come along and dumped there, uh, well, several boxes and several uh, suitcases and bin bags everywhere, because, I mean, this is basically all my worldly goods uh, that I brought from the house. I've had to store them in, my back, in the back room at my mum's, and I generally do not know where anything is. And every single day is a nightmare. You'll come across an item which, in your own house, is constantly to hand, and you'll try and look for it in a box, and you'll just not find it anywhere. He's not got a life anymore at the moment. Somebody looks at him at the moment. He wants to move on with his life. He wanted to enjoy life in his home, eventually probably have children. And also, he probably wanted to improve himself in his occupation. That cannot go ahead anymore, due to the fact of the assault. He cannot go any further with his career. He's had to drop in his career because it's affected him emotionally. He's not been able to concentrate. He's not been able to sleep. And he's just not the same person anymore. Uh, this is the actual main bedroom where me and the wife are sleeping. Um, the other room is just like a very, very small bo box room at the back. And we've got, you know, some of the items like in there which we don't use every day, but as you can see from in here, it's a, it's a tip because we're just tripping over stuff because we've got nowhere to store our belongings whatsoever. There are items which you need around you on a daily basis which make you feel secure. And without, you know, having these from the house, you know, you feel very unsecure. I've got to support the two of them. I'm the one who's got to be there to be strong. And it's affecting you. Yeah, it's affecting me. It really is.
Parkinson, Hollywood star Denzel Washington. You have a real problem. Supermodel Naomi Campbell. I'm talking about it candidly here for the first time. And X Factor Supremo Simon Cowell. Oh, you are a figure. Oh, you are. Plus music from Ronan Keating. Parkinson, 10 past 10, Saturday on ITV1. Security guard Elton Cook has been barred from his house and his street after being arrested for assault. He and his wife have had to move in with his mum. Yeah, so I'm going to pack up. Because I'm being pushed out of my own home, basically. There you go. All one's worldly goods in one box. Today is Elton's third court appearance. He's pleading not guilty. Pretty much as we expected, Elton enters his plea. Um, the court declined jurisdiction and the matter's now been adjourned for a committal hearing in April when it'll be committed formally to the Crown Court for trial. Right, what does that mean? Basically, it means that the Crown Prosecution Service have now got to get their case together to prove that there is uh, a prima facie case on which the case can then be transferred to the Crown Court where it will be heard for trial. So it's a fairly short hearing on the next occasion and then no! Elton will need to appear at the Crown Court uh, and uh, the trial will then be fixed from there. Uh, the magistrate was extremely friendly, very nice. Um, entered my plea of not guilty uh, for the charge that I'm up against. And it's now been, like I said, been put forward to the 26th of April. Just doesn't help with all the anxiety, you know, for me and my family, you know, just having to wait and wait, you know, for the outcome of this. I mean, I'm hoping for a good result on it, but at the end of the day, we've just got to believe in the British justice system. How, how did you advise Elton today? Well, Elton's always maintained that he was uh, acting in defence of his wife because he believed that the complainant in this case was about to assault his wife and, in fact, probably had already assaulted his wife. So he said that he'd struck out the complainant to stop him from doing that. That constitutes self-defence because you can defend yourself and uh, other people. And obviously, Elton's first instinct, he says, is to defend his wife when he fears that she was being attacked. So it's fairly straightforward to advise him in relation to his plea. Elton already had, uh, in his own mind, uh, understanding how courts work, the idea that he would wish to be dealt with by a Crown Court judge and jury before we got to the stage of advising him in relation to venue. So 26th of April, that gives you well over a month. What's going to happen at that time? Uh, basically, at the, the present time, I'm actually living with a family member because uh, I can't actually... I still attend my home address. The bail conditions have still been put in place again today. Uh, I'm being forced through this, th this trial, basically, to have to sell the property that I actually pay a mortgage on which is quite a stressful process at the moment. Uh, it just means my whole life, my job, everything's up in the air at the moment. Don't know whether I'm coming or going. Steve Tranter is the senior partner in the Withenshaw law firm of solicitors. Local boy made good. I come from uh, Withenshaw originally. I grew up around Withenshaw. Um, and uh, certainly my family had no connections with the law. Um, I think the idea simply came uh, when I was doing A-levels. Um, another uh, lad in the class at the time, uh, I think he had some relative who was in the law. Seemed like a good idea at the time. So then I did a law degree as a consequence of that, not really knowing where that would take me. Um, I've always had an interest in the business side of things, so having become a solicitor, decided to, to, to look into that and see whether that's an interesting career, which it was. Um, it was natural for me then to try my own practice, try my own thing, and I got into the business and then it, it sort of slowly expanded. Well, she's the account manager at the moment, I think, but she's also the new area manager, so you, you may find that she's above Rob anyway. No? Right, OK. But the firm is very different from the big money city practices. Starting wages for trainee solicitors aren't high. The trainee solicitor uh, rate is just over £14,000 now, um, which is a lot more when I started, which was, uh, it was £25 a week when I started. It was quite some time ago. So in real terms, there may have been perhaps a slight increase in, in the real wages, but it's, it's the liability side, really, the commitments they've got and the fact that they're now effectively paying for their own education, or certainly a big portion of that. Um, and the cost of living, the cost of uh, finding somewhere to, to rent or whatever. So it is it's, it's tougher. Uh, I think the solution in, in, in my day was, you know, if you live at home with your parents, that's, that's far better. Um, 
most of our people now in the mid-twenties tend to want to uh, have a place maybe rented or, or aspire to buy something but it's absolutely out of the question there's no way that on that kind of salary they, they can do that so on top of the, the, the 14,000 or so um, if they earn commission by going out in the early hours of the morning for example to police stations um, then obviously that, that can supplement the, the financial situation yeah. the, only, yeah. the only thing that I think about the section 47 scenario is the wages in the lifestyle may be tough but so is the training <laughs> today Trainees Phil Barnes and Matt Wallace are being put through a mock court case by Steve and two established advocates. It's just one of those things, you do it when you're at college, you do it, you see it in court all the time. Um, I'm not, you know, I know they're going to shoot me if I make mistakes, the whole point of training, isn't it? And you don't, um, you're not expected to get everything bang on. That's the whole point of learning, that's why we don't stand up in court for another 20 months or whatever it might be until I qualify. Hello, Phil, come in. Hello. Right, Phil, uh, the object of the exercise today is, uh, is a mock uh, plea of mitigation or bail application. I believe you've got the, the bail application. Yeah. So you've got the short straw, I think, today. Take your time. You've got up to about 10 minutes. Uh, we may interrupt, but probably won't until the end. Then we'll throw in some feedback and see how we go from there. OK, refer to your notes and start whenever you're ready. Cheers. Um, good afternoon, Your Worships. Uh, as you're aware, I'm here this, morning, this afternoon representing Mr Fletcher. Um, my friend for the Crown has outlined that he applies for a remand in custody and you still feel quite formal about it because you know that that's what's expected of you and you, you know that they're looking at it, not through magistrates' eyes, but they're, they're, they're imagining sitting in the public gallery and watching you in court and evaluating you that way, so you might as well try and do it. Itself, as properly as you can. If they just wanted you to put forward the points that were relevant rather than do it formally, then they'd ask you to write it down. The next occasion at court. However, I do concede that your worships may be considering conditions on his bail, and my client is willing to accept them. Thanks, Phil. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> a little bit nervous. I've not done uh, anything like this before, especially with cameras in your face as well. It makes it a little bit, uh, a little bit different. But um, it should be um, fairly interesting to find out a little about, you know, how. Uh, how I develop my advocacy skills are, what work I need to do in that area. Uh, when the supervisor grabbed hold of Paul, he thought that he'd better help his friend, and he went over to loosen the supervisor's grip. He did not and knowing to sort of Steve and Sarah and Abishu, they're sitting there, they're experienced advocates, and it's as much as trying to impress them as, as anything else. So it, that's almost, I think, more nerve-wracking than it would be standing in front of a magistrate. So I think it's a very good preparation for that. OK, so we won't mark out 10. We'll just put some constructive comments <laughs> yes. down and, and it's been worthwhile for them, yeah. I think so. I think we should do this again, uh, perhaps in a couple of months' time. Yeah. At Tameside General Hospital, Kirk Jones is in recovery after his operation. The metal rod that's been in his leg since he was hit by a drink driver has been removed. Right, I'm just going to cut this off now, all right. How's that feel, Kirk? It's all coming off. Yeah, it feels all right. It feels like there's a bit of air getting to it now, anyway. How's the paint today? Is it OK? The yeah, it's all in back, yeah. And these are a bit sore. But it will be, because that's where they pulled the uh, metal work from, didn't it? Tell us what you're up to there and why you're doing that. Just cutting it off really, it's easier to actually cut it off than keep on keep